Now what I've learned over this last few years, there are ways in which to make this game a little bit easier. And what I've got in this bag right now are the perfect tools that you need to break 100 or maybe even a bit better. Now Golfers allows us to put 14 clubs in our bag, but I reckon there are seven that you need that are the ultimate, I wanna say cheat sticks. They certainly make this game a lot easier. And if you're looking to break 100, then some of these clubs will definitely help you in some of the issues you're suffering from right now. And this is one of them. You see, we all know that golf is, uh, it's a tough old game. It is not easy and we need as much help as we can get. And often we can overcomplicate matters by putting 14 clubs in the bag. And what I'm gonna show you today is, uh, well, seven clubs that, like I said, make the game a damn sight easier. Because the likelihood is, there's a few issues you're struggling with if you're not breaking 100 and uh, well, I reckon I know what they may be. Now, one of those issues quite possibly could be the irons that you're playing right now. Are they suitable for your game? Well, I can certainly tell you that the easiest type of golf club that I've tested over this last couple of years has been the likes of this Launcher HB. This, uh, this club that is effectively a hybrid of hybrid and iron. There's plenty out there. There's a Cobra T-Rails that I can think of and what they do, they've got a lot of bulk and mass. I've said before, I put half a swing. You can see there's not a lot going on there. And all I am looking to do is get this ball a little bit further down the fairway. Now, I don't know how easy that seemed in terms of how I swung it. I did very little indeed. In fact, it was just a three quarter swing what it's done. It's nice and easy to launch the ball. I can see a lot of bulk and mass. I'm not looking at a blade like iron or anything similar. And straight away, I've just made the game just a little bit easier. And what I'm looking to do, don't forget, is I'm looking to break 100. I've got a couple of shots virtually on every hole. So I know what I've got to do is make sure I make good contact, get that ball straight, and keep getting ever closer to that hole. So I've got it off the tee. I've played a fairway wood, which is a lot more confidence than driver. I've then picked up my hybrid of hybrid irons. And again, I've managed to shift it another 150 yards down the fairway. And now I'm left with this nightmare of all nightmares. We've got that sort of half wedge shot, the one we all hate no matter what ability you play at. But as a golfer that's looking to break 100, what are your choices right now? Well, you could be looking at throwing your lob wedge up in the air and judging distance and control. That's so, so difficult. You've then got a low chip and run shot, which would be much more favourable. Or you go to this club that I reviewed recently. This club being a chipper. Yes, a chipper. It's got 46 degrees loft on the same of your pitching wedge, but the stroke becomes a lot more simplified because essentially it's an extension of your putting stroke. Because as I said in the video, this is just a putter with some loft on it. So you don't change nothing in terms of your putting stroke. And what that's gonna allow us to do, hopefully, is first of all, I'm able to get the ball online. I'm going to where I'm directed. It's unlikely that I'm gonna twist this club head at impact. It is only a putting stroke after all. So even if I don't get this one quite right, what I'm looking to do is just get somewhere on that putting surface. So, putting stance. And let's see what we can do. So there you go. Pulled it down that left-hand side a little bit. We're onto the green. A little bit short in terms of weight, but we've done exactly what I said we can do. It's almost foolproof. I can't get this wrong. All I'm doing is executing an extended putting stroke. And whether I'm in and around the green, I do exactly the same thing. So you've got to have a chipper in your club if you want to break 100, just that little bit easier. But whilst that chipper is really effective when there's nothing in front here, in other words, you don't need a great deal of loft and it's very much uh, a chip and run style shot, we all know that golf never quite pans out that way. And effectively during your 18 holes of golf, you're gonna end up in a situation like this where you've got, you need some loft, you need to be able to flight the ball over uh, the likes of a bunker and therefore we're gonna need a different club in the bag. That different club in the bag is obviously a, uh, a wedge. That wedge that I've got in hand is 58 degrees. But the key factor is it's the wide sole wedge for me that is the key element that makes the uh, execution of the shot just a little bit easier. These wide sole wedges, I've happened to have the sort of, um, this is the Haito uh, big foot, that's the one, is, uh, is what I've got in hand right now. 
but are there many that have sort of promoted, if you like, over the last couple of years, the likes of the CBX range from, uh, from Cleveland is another typical example of how good that bounce can be in terms of um, helping out average golfers. And for me, I mentioned this in a previous video, in recent weeks is keeping that sort of V in the arms again, just that putting stroke, trying to make things simpler. And as you see, it pops the ball up in the air. We're back in with a chance in terms of holding out a putt. And more importantly, we haven't gone and stuck it in that bunker, which is essentially where we really start to lose shots. So plenty of loft in the bag as well at the opposite end, wide, wide sole, keep that putting stroke going, and again, should eliminate a lot of the shots that keep tallying up and making you score way too many on holes. Right, so we've gotten ourselves to the green. So what is the most effective putter out there to help me break 100? Well, in my opinion, the first thing you need to get, and this is a little bit subjective of putter, but what I would say is that you want a face balanced mallet style putter. The reason I say that is because they're more forgiving and they're more stable than that of the likes of a blade that is the sort of other end of the spectrum, if you like. And there's plenty in between all that. The second thing I would suggest, and I've chosen this putter to demonstrate it, is something with a real strong alignment aid. And that doesn't come any better than the classic sort of Odyssey 2 ball. That for me is great if you're struggling with alignment, you've got your ball and you've got the two balls that are imprinted on the putter. So to be able to align those three effectively makes it a real easy or easier way of aligning puts and hopefully getting that ball next to the hole. Now the next thing you need to obviously work on is your execution, your ability to control the pace and all those other things. But first of all, we've given ourselves a chance in terms of stability and in terms of alignment. Go on ball, roll out, roll out. Now I'd take that any day of the week, but the key factor is, yes, the pace was good, but the key factor was the putter helped me keep things nice and stable, nice and steady, and got that ball rolling at the hole on my intended line. Now let's not be foolish, and I'm certainly not getting ideas above my station. I am not in any real position to tell anybody how to play the game of golf. But like I said, in recent weeks in particular, certainly over the last few months, I've tested out a lot of product that I've thought, you know what, we make this game already a difficult game as hard as we possibly can by choosing the wrong type of products. And this bag I've put together today, well, like I said, it's not, it's not genius. It's not an instructional video. It's just me trying to relay some information to you that if you're struggling with certain elements of the game and certainly off the tee, irons, flop shots, chip shots, putting even, all those kind of elements, they're difficult and you're likely to be struggling with maybe one or maybe more than one of those issues. And some of these products I'm showing you today can hopefully help you out. And if they do, I'll be pleased with myself. Okay, so the first shot I hit today, I suggested that was one of the clubs you may need in the bag. And uh, I didn't quite get around to telling you what that was, but I will now. Essentially, on the tee is a big issue for most average golfers who are struggling. It can be an area of, uh, of real concern, of real worry. Confidence can be low. And now I'm faced with something that I don't particularly like if my confidence is low, and that's trouble left, trouble right, and a fairly tight gap. So what do I do? Well, from the tee, naturally, everybody would pick up driver. It's just what we do. We watch it on the telly. Our mates go for driver. So therefore we think, well, we better go for driver as well. And it's a huge mistake. Right now in this bag that I've put together, the longest club that I have in the bag, well, it's a five wood. And I'm suggesting that you do the same. Now there are other options from this position, but right now I'm gonna suggest the longest option you go for, depending on how you're feeling, in terms of confidence, and don't forget this is the longest shaft as well. So the one that I've got least control with, well, that's less five wood. Well, let's see if we can find a bit of a gap. That's right down the middle. The interesting fact is this, everything I've just preached right now about reaching for driver is exactly what I would normally do on a Saturday afternoon in a competition. I've just hit five wood, it's gone right down the middle and I'm in position A. I don't know why I can't take heed of my own advice at times. 
Now, choice of shot is also key to conquering that break in 100 or certainly lowering your score. And it's very easy to be in this position, which we've just come to from the five foot off the tee. We're going across the angle of a uh, bunker, which is probably another 20 yards further on. And my shot to the green is probably about 60 or 70 yards. So right now, this is a real dilemma because I'm suggesting to you, you've got a 60 degree, 58 degree wedge in the bag and you've got a chipper. What do you do? Will you adapt the style of the chipper would be my opinion and you choose a more logical route to green and that's not go directly over the bunker. So if things go wrong, we kick on along the side of it and we don't go straight in it. So right now I'm aiming at the top side of the bunker. I'm gonna extend my putting stroke. And that's a perfect example of where poorly executed shot and got away with it because I made the right choice in terms of the line that I took. If I'd have played that shot that I've just executed directly at the flag, which meant taking on the bunker, I'd have gone straight in the bunker and then I'm struggling to get out and then I'm starting to add shots to my score that were unnecessary just by making bad decisions. Now, another typical scenario where things go, well, they go all kinds of wrong from this kind of position where we know we should be playing some kind of wedge shot here in terms of our short game, but our confidence again is low. We're on a tight lie. That's a little bit of a, uh, a tricky one for us to play. Now we have got the chipper, which I think again can be played from here and eliminate some of those problems. But I also suggest that we kind of look and consider the putter a bit more often often referred to as a Texas wedge. I think sometimes people are a little bit scared or embarrassed to play a putter from this kind of position because they know in theory they should be playing a nice fancy wedge shot. But I would just want to get it on that green and give myself a chance of making par. Now break, now break. Now all of a sudden I've got to ask myself the question, I've got to within two, maybe three foot and that's a put for par. Don't forget we've played five wood, we've played chipper, we've played putter, and I've got two or three foot to make par. I've got to ask myself the question, how things could have turned out if I'd made different decisions from tee to green? Would I be making a put for par then? So I still didn't reveal what that club was that I played from the very first shot of the day. Well, it was a seven wood. We've played a five wood that I suggest is an essential in the bag. We've got a seven wood, which I think is an essential part of the bag. And now we're gonna to go to that third longest in the bag, which is a hybrid. But it's a five hybrid with 25 degrees loft on it. And I think that's the important fact here. What we want is we want a club with plenty of versatility. So I can play this from the fairway, I can play it from the rough, I can play it from a tee box, I can play it from in and around the green for a chip and run. But all I want is I wanna master these seven clubs that are in my bag. And a hybrid being one of them, Right now I'm faced with a par three. I don't know how far we've got, 160, 170 yards. All the trouble is in the bunkers, both right and left of the green. So what I just want is that half swing like we played with the iron at the beginning. And I want this ball to go straight and I want it somewhere down there. I'm not trying to reach the green, I'm trying to break a hundred. If it gets to the green, that's fantastic. But I just want half a swing and I want to see what this club will do for me. Well, it's going right at the flag. It's going right at the flag. Well, we're actually just gone through past the flag a little bit, but again, all I'm trying to demonstrate, and hopefully I'm doing that, is that that swing was again, like, I don't know, 75 mile an hour is what I would think it would relate in sort of Trackman data. It was a slow, nice and easy tempo swing. And I let the club do all the work for me. I didn't put a tee peg down either. We just took that straight off the turf. But the important factor for me was this. Yes, we've gone through past the flag on the green, but the, the thing was it was straight and it was controlled because the way in which I'm gonna lose shots and I'm gonna add up to my tally of going past 100 is if I start to go left and right. And even if I get this wrong, let's say, even if I duff this shot another 10 or 15 yards and I don't get it quite right, let's be honest, this isn't gonna cure all your problems, this bag setup that I'm referring to, but we're in play, we're straight, and we've got a club in the bag in and amongst the seven essentials that I've just suggested that can play that next shot for us. And what we don't need is another seven clubs to make life even more confusing for us. Let's just master these seven shots and these shot types. And I'm pretty sure it would reduce scores pretty significantly. So this would be five hybrid, two ball putter. Oh, 
nearly. Right, so let's put this theory to the test and we're going to combine it all in this 18th hole at Carden Park. I've got seven clubs, don't forget to choose from. 456 yard par five, the first being the longest club I have in the bag, which is a five wood. My issue here is I want to avoid the bunkers down that right hand side. I want half a swing or three quarters of a swing, whatever you want to call it, just controlled. And I want to get down in that fairway. Well, that's a super start. My five wood has arguably got me into position A. I certainly didn't need driver for that one. Right, now this next shot potentially provides me with a dilemma. If I'm playing golf at my level, then I'm going to hit a hybrid or something. And I'm going to go and go over the trees and go through the gap. But I'm putting this as a consideration of somebody who's looking to break 100. And my thought process is this. I've got the tree on the left and the trees on the right that are my potential hazard. They're the danger if I go into either of those or block myself out in terms of either of those. Then I've got a problem in terms of shot number three. So I'm taking my ability into account. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to that seven iron of my hybrid iron. And I'm going to aim towards down the middle. But if things go wrong, I know that I haven't got enough club really to put me in trouble behind those trees. And if things go right, I've still got a chance of reaching the green in regulation. So again, it's all about control and keeping straight. And we've got right down the middle, right in between the gap. And that's gone further than I thought, if I'm perfectly honest with you. I keep saying it, but I, uh, I don't know why I just can't play like this myself. Right, okay, so now we've got a real dilemma on our hands because we've probably, without getting the yardage, I've got about 100 yards to go to that flag. But if I go on a direct route to it, then I'm taking on two bunkers that are very much staggered between me and the flag. That's a real high risk shot. So from me looking to break 100, I've got to be thinking, right, well, what am I going to, what's the shot I can play that stays out of trouble, but still me, helps me get somewhere near that green. And I can see the left hand side of the green, the bottom half of it. Yes, I'm going to be a long way from the hole, but at least I'm somewhere near that putting service. And don't forget, this is my third shot I'm playing. So I'm aiming left of the bunker. And what I'm going to try and do is get it somewhere up on that green. And I've opted to play with this chipper. Now get over that. Kick on. Kick on. Kick on. It looks from here, we've just managed to stay just a yard or two short of the fringe. We avoided the bunkers and don't forget, I'm on there in three shots. So I've still got two to possibly make par. But as someone who's looking to break a hundred, if I walk off with a six, I'd be delighted. And a seven double bogey on a par five, it's not the end of the world right now. Right, so the flag is as far back as it'll go to be quite honest with you. So this is, uh, we're playing this as tough as it can be in terms of the flag position. And we were a yard or two short. Now, arguably, a lot of people for this kind of distance would be looking to chip. The chipper is certainly an option, but for me, it's keeping that ball on the ground. I'm using the two ball putter. I've got my alignment. I've just got to hope I can get the pace of this all the way back to the hole and get a chance of making a par. So the line is good. The pace it's bang on, it just drifted off on the bottom on the last end of the put, uh, the roll, but I've got three foot and I've got a chance of making par. And don't forget, five wood, seven iron, chipper, putter. Do you know what that did better than I actually thought from back there? We got the weight so good, but the important bit was like, for, like I said, for me, it's just about giving yourself a chance from back there. And it was a lot harder to judge a chip than it was to try and judge a put. This one's got a little bit of break in it, but can we get a par five using just our little seven essential golf clubs? No, we can't. In fact, we've hit the worst putt of the day and it swung a lot more than I thought. And now we're struggling to make six. We'll take six. So we finish with a bogey six on a par five. You've seen the clubs I used. You've seen the mentality behind it. I said earlier on, the thought process is also key. The choices we make and decisions we make, our game management, I suppose is what you call it, is also a key element. But what I've shown you today is hopefully seven clubs that can 
make a difference to part of your game and if you've identified something in amongst all that today that you've been struggling with whether that be off the tee whether it be from the fairways whether it be in and around the greens if you can take one element of that and it's any good to you then i'll be really really pleased because as i said i'm very conscious of the fact that i never tell anybody how to play this game i've certainly got my own problems to worry about but seeing these products and test these products over recent weeks and months i've learned that there are ways that can help certain aspects of your game when you are struggling with them so uh, as ever take from it what you will hope you enjoyed the video Carden Park has been absolutely gorgeous today. I'm only keeping this jacket on because uh, my mic's wired up to it and I'm absolutely roasting and can't wait to get it off. Right, thank you for watching. Comments down below, give me any feedback you wish and I'll see you all soon.